A very good morning to you all. Uh, welcome to the Breakfast News, where we get you the big national and international stories to get you started early in the morning. I'm Ashwarya <laughs> Kapoor with you. And our top story is the setback suffered by Nitish Kumar in his battle to be the Bihar Chief Minister. All the details coming up, uh, but after the headlines. Bihar Governor orders a floor test on 20th of February as Nitish Kumar lines up 128 MLAs in support. JDU and BJP trade charges over alleged horse trading. <laughs> Delhi's Chief Minister designate Arvind K. Shrival will meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi today, expected to invite him for his swearing in ceremony on Saturday. Swine flu claims 12 more lives across the country. Death toll touches 407 in 2015 alone. And US President Barack Obama calls for military authorization for fight against Islamic State. US Congress to debate Obama's proposal. Well, today's top story, Bihar Governor K.N. Tripathi has agreed to Chief Minister Jeetan Ram Manji's request for a vote of confidence on 20th of February. He has refused to allow Nitish Kumar, who has staked claim to the post, to prove his maturity. The decision came hours after Nitish Kumar lined up 128 JDU MLAs at the Rashtrapati Bhavan last evening. A show of strength at the Rashtrapati Bhavan in Delhi. Former Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar met the President on Wednesday with 128 of his MLAs in tow. With him were JDU President Sharad Yadav, SP Chief Mulayam Singh Yadav and RJD President Lalu Yadav. Delegation में आदरणीय राष्ट्रपति जी से मिले हैं और हम लोगों ने यह बात उन्हें बताई है कि बिहार में बहुमत का समर्थन हम लोगों को प्राप्त है राष्ट्रपति शासन लगाने के का जो अप्रहसन है हम लोगों को अगर एक कोशिश किया गया तो हम लोग नहीं जानते हैं कि क्या होगा बिहार में से नीतीश कुमार स्टेट क्लेम टू लीड द गवर्नमेंट इन बिहार आफ्टर ही वाज चोजन द लीडर ऑफ द जे डी यू लेजिस्लेचर पार्टी ऑन मंडे Kumar has said he wants to take a trust vote immediately to clear the path for his return as Bihar Chief Minister, but Governor K. N. Tripathi has denied him that right. Following the delay in a decision by the Governor, Nitish Kumar flew to Delhi. हम लोगों का यही आग्रह है कि इस मामले में तुरंत फैसला होना चाहिए, क्योंकि फैसला लेने में विलंब से वहाँ का माहौल प्रदूषित हो रहा है। हॉर्स ट्रेडिंग को बढ़ावा दिया जा रहा है उसको अवसर देना चाहते हैं सदन में अपना बहुमत साबित करने का वो अवसर दें लेकिन यह न्यूनतम समय मिलना चाहिए कम से कम समय मिलना चाहिए ताकि कोई निर्णय तत्काल हो सके जब एसआर आर के मामले में सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने यह कह दिया कि शक्ति परीक्षण का फैसला सदन के अंदर होगा तो फिर सड़कों पर क्यों घुमा रहे हैं ये तो केवल नाटक कर रहे हैं ये राजनीतिक ड्रामा कर रहे हैं और राज्यपाल को समय देना चाहिए दोनों पक्षों के लोग मिले हैं अर्लियर इन द डे द पटना हाई कोर्ट हैड स्टेड नीतीश कुमार इलेक्शन एज द लेजिस्लेचर पार्टी लीडर हम माननीय उच्च न्यायालय के इस फैसले का स्वागत करते हैं और माननीय उच्च न्यायालय के इस फैसले ऐसी एक बहुत बड़ा बिहार को राहत मिला है बिहार के मुख्यमंत्री आदन जो महादलित वर्ग ऐसी आते हैं आदरणीय जीत जीतन मांझी जी जिस बेहद करके जिस तरीके से उन्हें हटाने की कोशिश की जा रही थी इससे रोक लगाने का काम किया हमारे उच्च न्यायालय ने A constitutional crisis in Bihar emerged after the JDU Legislature Party not only chose Nitish as its leader but also removed Bihar Chief Minister Jitan Ram Manji from the party. Manji was handpicked to be Chief Minister nine months ago by Nitish Kumar himself. With inputs from Sham Sundar and Navikram Singh, Bureau Report for Rajya Sabha TV. And on to news uh, from the national capital, uh, where the Chief Minister designate Arvind Kejriwal will uh, meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi uh, this morning. Now, this will be the first official meeting uh, between the two leaders. The meeting comes two days after the Prime Minister congratulated Kejriwal and his Aam Party for a landslide victory in the Delhi Assembly polls, in which Modi's BJP was decimated. Now, during the meeting today, Kejriwal is expected to formally invite Modi to his swearing-in ceremony on Saturday. Kejriwal and his uh, team also met President Pranam. Mukherjee last evening.
All right, uh, joining me for a chat this morning is uh, Ms. Gargi Parsai, who is a senior journalist. Thank you so much, Gargi, for joining us here on Rajya Sabha TV. Uh, Gargi, speaking about uh, the Aam Aadmi Party, well, uh, of course, the crown has been won. But the, the point is there are a number of challenges really ahead uh, uh, for the Aam Aadmi Party and its convener, Arvind Kejriwal, uh, because it has 67 seats. It, it will have, as far as the uh, governance is concerned, it will have an unbridled run, but it is not going to be a smooth sailing. Well, um, I think we should allow them time to prove themselves this time over, yes. as they have shown in the elections. Hmm. They came to the elections pretty well prepared. Yes. You know, and... Uh, uh, they conducted the elections uh, like a proper political party. Yes. They took care of all the nitty gritty. Mm. So there is no reason to believe that they would not bring in this kind of organization and this kind of skill into governance. True. I agree that they lack the kind of experience that a political system would have. True. And uh, to tell you frankly, I don't even know if they really believe in that kind of a system. Mm. What they really would need, uh, in my view, is hmm. they need to put in place a proper team, you know, a good team of uh, advisors, a good team of uh, hmm. people who can execute their plans hmm. and a good team of experts, yes. you know, who can uh, implement uh, their plans. The hmm. plan will be theirs. They already have a plan in place. Hmm. They did a Delhi dialogue wherein they got a lot of response from people and they have come up with an action plan based on their Delhi dialogue. Hmm. And uh, apart from that, there are other things also which uh, Mr. Kejriwal is deeply interested in, like mm. the Jan Lokpal bill, which yes. he could not get through last time. Mm. In fact, that was one of the reasons why he had to quit. True. He couldn't get support on the floor of the assembly for that yes. bill. And uh, then he has the Swaraj bill, which mm. is his pet bill, pet mm. uh, legislation. Then they, uh, the one thing good about the Aam Aadmi Party is that they have a bottom-up approach. So, you know, they go to the people, they, they sit with people, they plan out things with people and they had, they have an incomplete agenda of mo constituting Mohalla Samitis mm. to implement the work, you know, at the real grassroots level. Yes. So, uh, yes, it is challenging, but I would think they are better prepared this time. All right. So, you'd say that uh, the last innings, uh, if we compare, uh, I mean, if we look at, in fact, we can't compare right now. Uh, but with the last innings, we saw a number of sittings and uh, a number of uh, cases where there was a sort of power struggle really with the centre. Do you think this time it won't happen? See, the power struggle was also there. Yes, it was there with the centre. It was also there because there was no acceptability of the Aam Aadmi Party. And as you might have noticed during the run-up to the elections also, mm. there was really no acceptability of the Aam Aadmi Party in the manner in which the political parties were addressing the Aam Aadmi Party, addressing Mr. Kejriwal and the but way... But they had the numbers. No, no, no. I'm talking in the run-up to the elections. I mean, mm. to the way they were called the names and all. And no, no. It's like, you know, it's somebody, an intruder coming into the political system. Okay. You know, that had been the approach. Mm. So what I'm saying is, what was your question? Sorry. I was saying that uh, the last innings of Arvind Kejriwal, yeah. uh, we saw a number of sit-ins, a number of power yeah, struggles. Yeah. And in this case, in Delhi case, in the case of Delhi, uh, it becomes all the more prominent because Delhi does not have full statehood. Yes. And that means that it does not, the, uh, the Delhi mm. government does not have the police under it. Mm. And if you remember, the last time also, this was a bone of contention. There were mm. certain cases that happened with the Aam Aadmi want, Party government wanted uh, the police to proceed in a particular way to look into and the mm. police was resisting also I would suspect with the backing of the UPA government mm. so to avoid that kind of a thing this time uh, I would say Mr. Kejriwal has started really on the right foot mm. the CM designate has gone and met uh, Mr. Uh, Venkaiya Naidu and Mr. Rajna Singh and yes. he's meeting the Prime, Prime Minister, Minister today, today. Yes. this is only to uh, seek their cooperation not mm. only to invite them for the swearing in but mm. to seek their cooperation so that see the land Land, police and NDMC does not come under the Delhi government and it does not come under the governance of uh, Mr. Arvind Kejriwal. Mm -hmm. So there is a potential of a clash there if the centre and state do not have a good relationship. True. We have to think how this plays out because uh, Mr. Modi was really graceful to call Mr. Kejriwal after he lost the election. I mean, he called him on the phone. Congratulated him. Congr yeah. He took the first step. To and now they are meeting today. Yes. So we should be positive and hope that the government is more open to accepting the Aam Aadmi Party like the people have. And what about the role of the opposition here? Uh, 
Arvind Kejriwal in his uh, victory speech, he made it very clear that, you know, you should not, uh, you, you stay, uh, you, you, this is a very big mandate, but it's also scary. And he also told his uh, party men that one should not uh, take it uh, uh, to uh, uh, heart really ki hum log bahut the word that he used was i mean ahankari nahi hona this is the word that he used uh -huh. uh, so do you think uh, that is going to be very significant See, lack of opposition in any political system is not a good thing at all yes. there should be opposition because opposition mm -hmm should be a watchdog to mm -hmm. what the government is doing and they should keep the balance and the checks on the government really uh, in this case if I may say so, in the last innings, the AAP itself was its own opposition in the way they conducted the affairs of the government. Mm. But as I keep saying that this time round, I think they are better prepared. Mm. They will do much better. And mm. even if there is a very measly opposition of three members, mm. many times parliament and assemblies have been stopped even by a single member. So it's not so do you as think BJP is going to be uh, that uh, aggressive. No, I don't think they'll be that aggressive because there should be enough reason for them to be aggressive. If the government does well, if the government is transparent, if the government is uh, competitive, if the mm. government is competent, if the government is delivering, mm. then I think they'll also uh, have to play around. There is one thing, of course, the bottom line is that there should be, yes. my hope is and my expectation is that there would be no scope for corruption in this government. So that is a one very, very positive thing. Also, Gargi, a very interesting uh, comment uh, we saw from Prashant Bhushan who said that controlling new MLAs will be AAP's biggest challenge. Do you think that is going to really be... No, he is, I think, pointing to point. some of the MLAs that the Aam Aadmi Party has taken from other parties. There is one MLA from BSP. There is another MLA from uh, the BJP. Hmm. And uh, there are charges that these MLAs were willing to even give money to get tickets. Hmm. In fact, uh, Mr. Prashant Bhushan had somewhat stayed away this time from the Aam Aadmi Party campaign because of his uh, hmm. reservation on uh, these kind of candidates being brought into the party. But hmm. I think Mr. Kejriwal and the Aam Aadmi Party were really looking at the winnability of candidates. As I said, this time they have conducted themselves as a political party. Right. I mean, kehte na, shisha hai, shisha ko kaatta hai. So hmm. you, have to, you have to beat them at their own game. And again, bottom line is with no corruption. Now, whether they have taken money or not, I am in no position to say. But I would suspect they would not have. If Kejriwal is at the helm of affairs, money would not have exchanged hands. But... Uh, the MLAs last time also there were some kind of complaints about MLAs because you know you can't cast them in a particular mold that is a that is a problem with most people mm. that we want to see them cast in a particular mold behave in a particular manner they are arm army mm. they have come out of the arm army they have come out of the arm janta aisi hoti hai mm. Samay lagega unko us system mein dhalne ke liye apne aapko. Yes. But uh, I think that uh, if the leadership is strong there should be no worry. Overall, we should be optimistic at least. Uh, we should give enough uh, time and chance uh, to Arvind K. Yeah. to at least. I am very work. optimistic that they will do very well and they will complete their full term. All right. Uh, well, thank you so much, Agargi, for joining us here on Rajasabha TV and uh, putting things in perspective for us. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. All right, earlier on Wednesday, the Aam Aadmi Party got to work soon after their massive win in Delhi. Party Chief Arvind Kejriwal met Urban Development Minister Venkaiah Naidu and Home Minister Rajnath Singh to seek centre's help to deliver on some of the key promises that AAP made during the campaigns. Not wasting any time post his party's historic win, Delhi's Chief Minister-elect Arvind Kejriwal met Urban Development Minister Venkaiah Naidu on Wednesday. Kejriwal was accompanied by his close aide and AAP leader Manish Sisodia. They sought the center's cooperation in several issues concerning the city-state. बहुत सारी ऐसी चीजें हैं जिनमें हमें लगातार आपके सहयोग की जरूरत पड़ेगी उसमें से चार बड़े इश्यूज हमने उनसे रिक्वेस्ट किया है कि हमें जहां जहां सहयोग की जरूरत पड़ने वाली है तो एक तो गांव देहात के जमीनों के मुद्दे हैं बहुत सारे फोर्स लैंड इक्वेशन होता है गांव के जमीनों के मुआवजे के मुद्दे हैं इन सारे मुद्दों पर हमें सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट से मदद की जरूरत पड़ेगी दूसरा अनऑथराइज कॉलोनीज के मुद्दे पर जिस पर सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ने अभी हाल में एक रेजोल्यूशन भी पास किया था the larger interest of the state. I told them that my cooperation depends on your operation. If you perform well and then if uh, the requests are uh, as per the norms that are available, I will be definitely extending support. There is no question of any political consideration whatsoever. The Aam Admi Party chief also met Home Minister Rajnath Singh. 
The leader reiterated his demand of full statehood for Delhi. आम आदमी पार्टी की पूर्ण बहुमत की सरकार दिल्ली में रहेगी और बीजेपी की पूर्ण बहुमत की सरकार केंद्र में है तो ऐसे में दोनों ही पार्टियां अगर पूर्ण राज्य का दिल्ली को पूर्ण राज्य का दर्जा देने पे एक मत नहीं है तो अब से बढ़िया मौका नहीं होगा इस मौके का फायदा उठाते हुए दिल्ली को पूर्ण राज्य का दर्जा देने में वो सहयोग करें मीन वाल अरविंद केजरीवाल हैज रिफ्यूज टू एक्सेप्ट जेड प्लस सिक्योरिटी मार्क आउट फॉर हिम टिल ही मूव इन टू हिज न्यू होम केजरीवाल अपार्टमेंट बिल्डिंग इन गाजियाबाद इज टू बी गार्डेड बाई टेन इंस्पेक्टर्स 50 male constables and 10 women constables ending the vip culture was a main pole plank of the aam aadmi party bureau report rajya sabha tv and on to some other news well 12 more deaths were reported from across the country to the swine flu virus on wednesday while the virus claimed two lives in west bengal 10 others succumbed to the h1n1 virus in gujarat taking the state's toll to 108 this year In all as many as 216 people have lost their lives to swine flu across the country in the first 10 days of February alone while well, the death toll has mounted to 407 due to the contagious disease this year mostly in states like Gujarat and Rajasthan the latest government data said that over 50000 cases have been reported first of uh, January this year The health ministry had earlier said that the virus had claimed 191 lives in the country against the total number of 2038 cases reported in January this year. Moving on now, well Delhi police's special investigation team will question former union minister Shashi Tharoor today in his wife Sunanda Pushkar's death case. Tharoor will be questioned at the Vasant Kunj police station. The police have uh, prepared a fresh questionnaire for Tharoor based on the information they gathered after questioning Sunanda's son Shiv Menon. The SIT had questioned Menon a few days ago. Now Tharoor was interrogated last month when he was asked over 50 questions by a team of four officers in the first of the three likely rounds of interrogation. Unko kal bulwaya ja raha hai unka bayan lene ke liye. तो उनका बयान रिकॉर्ड किया जाएगा क्योंकि जो अन्य व्यक्तियों को हमने एग्जामिन किया उसके आ, उनके बयानों को मद्देनज़र रखकर कुछ हमें फर्दर उनसे बातचीत करनी है वो बातचीत कल की जाएगी टाइम अभी मुझे मालूम नहीं है जो इन्वेस्टिगेटिंग ऑफिसर डिसाइड करेगा उसी समय होगा All right, take a short break here. Well, uh, up next, uh, verdict is out in the Italian cruise tragedy. The captain sentenced to 16 years in jail. That and much more after a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, well, a reminder on the importance of uh, maintaining a communal harmony and adherence to the constitution for governance. This was part of President Pranab Mukherjee's strong message speaking to the governors of states and union territories. And the conference is set to culminate today. Here is more. A lot of political speak has been expended recently over whether secular should be part of the preamble of the constitution. And given a rise in communal rhetoric, President Pranab Mukherjee sent out a strong message on the importance of maintaining communal harmony, saying that it is necessary that the constitution be the guiding document for governance. The president said, and I quote: "The constitution of India is the guiding document that provides the framework for governance. Every Indian looks forward to the constitution as the guarantor of her liberties, freedom, and equality." any deviation from the principles and provisions embodied in the constitution would weaken the democratic fabric of the country and jeopardize the social economic and political well-being of our citizens the governors and lieutenant governors have the primary responsibility to ensure that the affairs of the states and union territories are conducted strictly in accordance with the letter and spirit of this hallowed document prevalence of peace and communal harmony must be ensured The president was speaking to governors and lieutenant governors of states and union territories to discuss emerging challenges and other issues. The two-day governors conference, a first since Prime Minister Narendra Modi assumed office, will discuss issues like security with the main focus on borders, finance, sanitation, employment and on achievement of flagship schemes and projects. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And more national news in nationwide. The center will file an affidavit in Delhi High Court to justify the decision of offloading a Greenpeace activist from a UK-bound flight last month. 
Greenpeace activist Priya Pillai was offloaded on the basis of a lookout circular issued by the Intelligence Bureau in national interest. The court termed the action as inappropriate. An army helicopter Dhruv crashed in Jammu and Kashmir yesterday, killing a lieutenant colonel and a major who were piloting the chopper. The chopper crashed 30 minutes after it took off for training sortie. A snow avalanche in Gulmarg's ski resort killed a ski guide and trapped three skiers. However, the three skiers were later rescued. The mishap happened at the Aparavat mountain when a mass snow came down in rush. Four persons were injured in a powerful bomb explosion in Imphal last night. The blast took place at the Sagul Mang area in Imphal. The injured were rushed to a nearby hospital. Well, on to some international news now when European leaders are trying to negotiate a ceasefire in Ukraine. They have extended their high stakes summit into the early hours in Minsk as the fighting rages in eastern Ukraine. The talks are set to focus on securing a ceasefire, withdrawal of heavy weapons and creating a demilitarized zone. German Chancellor Angela Merkel and French President uh, François Hollande are tra leading uh, the peace initiative. They began talks with Ukraine's uh, Petro Poroshenko and Russia's Vladimir Putin. On the ground in eastern Ukraine's Donetsk and Luhansk regions, Wednesday saw new attacks. At least one person died when a hospital was shelled in the rebel-held city of Donetsk. And U.S. President Barack Obama has asked the Congress to formally authorize military force against Islamic State. Obama said that Islamic State was going to lose and called on lawmakers to show a united front. However, he met swift resistance from Republicans as well as his fellow Democrats, wary of another war in the Middle East. The fight against Islamic State could get bigger in coming days. U.S. President Barack Obama has sent his long-awaited formal request to the Congress to authorize military force. The draft allows for certain ground combat operations, including hostage rescues and the use of special forces. It includes no geographic limitations on a possible extension of the war beyond Iraq and Syria. This resolution reflects our core objective to destroy ISIL. It supports the comprehensive strategy that we've been pursuing with our allies and our partners. A systemic and sustained campaign of airstrikes against ISIL in Iraq and Syria, support and training for local forces on the ground, including the moderate Syrian opposition, preventing ISIL attacks in the region and beyond. Obama sent his request to the Congress a day after his administration confirmed the death of aid worker Kayla Mueller, who was the last known American hostage held by the group. Both the Senate and the House of Representatives must now approve Obama's plan. Now make no mistake, this is a difficult mission and it will remain difficult for some time. It's going to take time to dislodge these terrorists, especially from urban areas. But our coalition is on the offensive. ISIL is on the defensive and ISIL is going to lose. The U.S. has carried out airstrikes against Islamic State since last year in a coalition with 60 other nations. The coalition includes two intergovernmental bodies, the European Union and the Arab League. But it is the first time a U.S. president has sought congressional approval to use military force since President George Bush in 2002 ahead of the invasion of Iraq. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And the verdict is out in the Costa Concordia tragedy in Italy. Then the captain of the Italian cruise ship has been sentenced to 16 years in prison. However, the captain continues to claim his innocence and will appeal against the verdict. After a 19-month trial, the verdict is out. The captain of Costa Concordia, Francesco Scatino, was found guilty of manslaughter and other charges for the cruise's fatal wreck in January 2012 off the Italian coast. 32 people had died while hundreds more were injured. The victims' families called the verdict as a balanced judgment. Meanwhile, the captain denied the charges and claimed that he was being made a scapegoat. They could make a lot more. Uh, they, they decided to balance uh, the judgment uh, between uh, you know, uh, Scatino responsibilities and uh, the compensation for uh, compensations uh, for passengers. 
they could do a lot more and probably they will because we're gonna have a Già sapete che lui effettivamente abbiamo certificato che non è in buone condizioni di salute ma lui non è venuto perché ecco, fisicamente è molto molto provato. The ship was ripped open when it hit the shore and the passengers and crew were forced into a chaotic evacuation. It took engineers almost two years to raise the ship upright and an additional 10 months to refloat it and tow it to the Italian port of Genoa for dismantling. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And more international news and updates in World Wrap. A gunman shot dead three young Muslims in North Carolina on Wednesday. The police said the killing was over a parking dispute and possibly a hate crime. The gunman had earlier posted anti-religious messages on social media. The incident took place just three kilometers from the University of North Carolina campus. Protests were held in Yemen against a takeover by the Houthi militia group. Hundreds massed in the capital against the Houthi fighters who manned checkpoints and guarded government buildings they controlled. The protests took place after the United States, Britain and France shut their embassies over security concerns. Thousands of Greeks took to the streets of Athens to support their new anti-austerity government. Protesters unfurled banners in front of the parliament. Greece is locked in tough negotiations with Eurozone partners in Brussels to clinch a bailout package. Mexico's Colima volcano spewed a huge plume of smoke and ash in its latest eruption. The authorities said that the three eruptions uh, were recorded so far. The volcano is known as the most active in a Colima volcanic comple complex. Well, that's all in this edition of Breakfast News. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.